Hey folks, Trent from Plastic Smith Armory here. Uh, today we're going to do a little quick video on how you might want to reshape uh, some of the armor that you receive from our shop. I had a customer contact me just recently saying that his uh, fan braces weren't quite to his liking. Uh, he wanted to, the, the wrist was fine, but this sort of back part was a little bit uh, too big for uh, what his measurements were. So he was asking me how he might want to reshape them. And I thought that's a good opportunity to show the rest of you guys uh, how you might want to tweak your armor or how you, how you can take these and, and change them just a little bit so that they uh, will fit you exactly the way you want. Um, it's not difficult. Uh, it takes a few tools. It takes a little bit of know-how, uh, but with, uh, with a little bit of luck and a little bit of uh, some tutorial uh, magic here at Plastic Smith, I'm going to show you how that's done. So let's get to it. All right, so specifically what we're gonna look at today is how to reshape these, these preformed pieces. Um, we're gonna use the, uh, a little bit of heat, and that's pretty much it. We're gonna heat and, uh, and sort of hold it in the, in the position it needs to be in. We're gonna sort of strap it down. It's gonna, it's gonna cool off and it's gonna hold its shape. Um, this is the heat and bend method that I'm talking about. Uh, the other method that I use to shape plastic, of course, is vacuum forming. Uh, but for these, these simple curves, these one-way curves, uh, there's really no better way I know of uh, to, to shape this plastic. If you guys know of a better way to shape plastic, I'm, I'm all ears. I've been at this for about 20 years, uh, specifically working with plastic uh, armor in the SCA for 20 years. So uh, this is really the best way that I've figured out how to do this. So let's get started. All right, so let's say that I've got this piece. Uh, now my clients, my specific clients' specific uh, concerns were that uh, the the back sort of bell here is too big. So he would want to sort of shape it down more, more maybe to, to that sort of degree as opposed to, to, to being more sort of even on this, uh, on this opening here. Uh, but today all I'm going to really do is take this and I'm going to, I'm going to close it off. I'm going to make it so that it, it wants to rest shut because this, you can see it, it fits me well enough, but I would want it just cause the, I could use a longer strap, I suppose, but because the strap is the way it is, it's just a little bit hard to kind of tighten and cinch it down. So what I want is it, what I want is it for it to, to rest shut. And that's what we're going to do today. All right, so this will be our main tool that I'm going to use. I just use a, uh, this is just a propane torch. Uh, it's got, uh, it's hooked up to a propane tank that's down below my workbench here. Uh, lots of times you'll see these kinds of things with a, uh, with a propane, just a smaller propane cylinder, but I burn through those like crazy. So uh, I've got an adapter hose, and but it's it's the same kind of propane tank and propane torch setup that you'd see at Home Depot or or anything that you can get at sort of a local hardware store. So I'm going to spark it up, and I'm going to start heating. So uh, the most important thing when we're heating here, oh, maybe I'll shut this off just so we can talk a little bit. The most important thing to keep uh, into consideration when you're going to heat your plastic is is not to heat it up too quickly. So you want to do this in a gradual way. We want to heat the entire piece as evenly as we can to avoid any sort of malforming. And what we don't want is the plastic to smoke and we don't want the plastic to run. We don't want to liquefy it. All we want to do is soften it to almost kind of like a rubber consistency. So because this has already got strapping on it, I'm not going to do too much on the outside uh, just because I find that the, the, the patterns that the heat uh, sort of transfers uh, to the plastic uh, I can't I can't evenly sort of uniformly make that happen with the strapping on here. So I'm exclusively going to heat this on the inside. So let's see how that works. All right, so, uh, you know, medium high flame. That's my hottest flame. I don't quite need that much. Uh, it's kind of a feel. But all I'm going to do is just sort of start heating it on the inside of this plastic. And you'll see, as I heat it, it'll want to open up because this, this inside layer of plastic is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, expand as it's heated. And of course, if this expands and the outside doesn't, then it wants to open up. So that's fine. Um, that means it's working, so we're okay with that. You can kind of see that I'm, you know, I'm not being super precise here. Uh, I don't really have to be. I'm not spending... Uh, too much time in any sort of one spot. I'm sort of uniformly making it uh, you know, sort of all over the, the plastic. You can see that I'm just grabbing it with my bare hand for now. 
Um, I won't be able to do that for too, too much longer. Uh, if the, the sort of goal that I'm after here is to have this piece too hot to touch on this side, on the outside of the plastic, as opposed to the, the inside will be, you know, probably uncomfortable hot to touch right now. If I get, if I'm heating one side and the other side is too hot to touch comfortably with bare hands, that's kind of where you want to land. So maybe I'll take a pause here and just throw some gloves on just to make sure that I, you know, know what I'm doing here. All right, so these are just sort of single layer cowhide work gloves. Uh, there's nothing special, there's nothing heat resistant about them. Um, and that's, that's intentional. What I want is to be able to feel the heat through the gloves. Um, almost uncomfortable through the gloves. That's kind of where I sort of want to land to make sure that the plastic will hold its shape. You can, you can heat and bend it and it will hold its shape for a little while, but the sweet spot is so hot that it wants to hold its shape for longer so that it sort of remembers its shape, but not, not so hot that it kind of bends in a non-uniform fashion. Um, we want it, we don't want it sort of cool enough so that sure we can bend it and it's much, much easier to bend now than it was, but it won't remember the shape and over time it'll gradually open up. We want to, we want to avoid that. So where I've found, at least for this, uh, certainly for this eighth inch plastic, which is what this van brace is made of, high density polyethylene, um, I found that if it's, if it's uncomfortable to touch uh, through the glove for, for any length of time, that's kind of the ideal situation. Now everyone's going to be a little different and you're going to have different thicknesses of gloves and different pain tolerances and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'll see if I can get uh, give you a sense of, of when is good enough. But you can see this gap is quite a bit larger than when we started. That's because this bottom is, is uh, opening up and expanding but the top isn't quite so much and that's fine we're just going to teach this van brace where it wants to be once it's all hot enough you can kind of see that as we heat this up um, it's leaving sort of little marks as where you burn there's little oxidization marks in the plastic and that's a handy guide to figure out sort of where you've been um, and where you haven't been and that kind of stuff so certainly for heating uh, a flat sheet of plastic. Uh, it'll it'll be a, a good guide to know where you've been and where you haven't been. But all I'm really doing is sort of trying to heat it up in a uniform fashion. I don't spend too much time. I try to avoid the rivets because the rivets act as really excellent heat conductors, uh, being copper and all. And so uh, I don't want the rivets to heat up and burn the webbing on the other side. So I just kind of I just kind of avoid them. You know, again, we don't have to be super precise here. What you don't want to do is just heat one side up over and over and over and over again and then have that one side super hot and the rest of it not quite as hot because then it wants to just bend on that one side, on that one little, you know, sort of part that you've heated up. So you want it all more or less the same temperature. And so all I do is just go over it and over it and over it. So I can feel through the gloves now that it's getting pretty warm. Um, it's it's really easy to bend. It still has some spring to it, so so we're not quite there yet. Like it'll have a little bit of spring when I'm, you know, sort of done. Uh, let's see if I can kind of illustrate here. I can I can very much bend. I'll see this. I can feel it up in here. It's very very easy to bend. So I'm spending too much time in here. Uh, you just kind of want to feel it, get a get a sense of how I don't know, how it how it wants to work. It takes a it takes a bit of practice. That's for sure. But if I were if I were done here. I could, if I wanted to keep this smaller, I would sort of, you know, grab it in, in this kind of way and I'd tape it maybe down, maybe use some, some uh, painter's tape across the bottom, maybe clamp it here to make sure that it stays kind of where it's supposed to be. And that would be, that would be how I'm going to do this. But instead, I'm, I'm going to actually just use this strap to close it off. It's not quite, not quite there yet. I would uh, normally use a little more heat but this torch is a little bit loud and I don't want to shout over the torch. So I'm going slow and going slow is just never a bad idea with this stuff. Um, if you burn one spot too much or if you heat one spot too much and it liquefies, it, it 
it's very difficult to come back from that. Um, so if you go if you go too much, uh, you're you're kind of screwed. Um, you can always heat it a little more, but you can't ever heat it a little less once you've heated it too much. So going slow and steady is uh, definitely your in your best interest. You can see that uh, as you heat it, this plastic takes on a bit of a sheen. Um, and a sheen is fine. What you don't want is, uh, is it for it to get very, very shiny. Because that means that you've liquefied it and that has gone too far. This feels pretty close to done. I'll show you sort of two ways we can go at this. If you've got the materials, you can... Yeah, that feels really good. This is really rubbery. You've got all kinds of flex and twist that you can do with this. Um, all I'm going to do is is do the strap up. Uh, now that it kind of feels like it, it's, it's, it's pretty hot sort of all over, not smoking. Uh, if, if your plastic is smoking, you've gone too far. So all I'm going to do is do the strap up to where I think it should go. And it's a good idea to sort of go a little bit further past where you want it to end up because it will have some spring back. Um, it, all of this plastic will want to sort of naturally relax over time. So you can see the way that it wants to sort of fall now. Um, it's got a bit of a, an overlap here and almost no overlap, or no overlap at all here. So I want it to be a little more uniform. I want it to be a little closer like this. So I'm going to have to figure it a way, because it'll pivot around this done up strap, as you can see. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to, to hold it here and here. And luckily I use, I just use these clamps. Um, they're how I make these uh, these fan braces normally. Um, so I clamp it there. I clamp it there. Now if you don't have clamps, um, I've also used just painter's tape. Painter's tape holds pretty well. Uh, it doesn't leave any goo on the on the piece afterwards. What you don't want to do is clamp it too hard because then it leaves impressions in the plastic. And so now I can see that it's the shape I want. Um, what I like to do once it's sort of held, especially with these metal clamps, is I like to give it a little more heat on the inside just to just to teach it where it wants to be. To sort of teach it its new shape and kind of lock it in. And this is the same guy. I don't have sort of the freedom that I was using before, but I have to kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but I have to kind of like make sure that it doesn't linger anywhere too much in one spot. And here's where I can kind of go on the outside a little bit, just to just to make sure that the heat is nice and uniform. All I got to do is make sure that I don't go anywhere near that polypropylene webbing because it'll it'll melt like crazy. You know what, I think that's got to be good. You know you're sort of there. I don't want to touch the outside too much because it's still pretty warm. And I don't want to leave any fingerprints in the plastic. Um, it's pretty good, actually. You know you're there when you can kind of, you know, misshape the whole thing pretty easily. Um, and at this stage, you can kind of, you know, you can, you can boss the shape around a little more. Like if I wanted this, if I wanted this to be, you know, more, more oblong, or, or, or flatter to, to fit a certain wrist shape. I could kind of boss it around here. I could give it a little press and it'll it'll want to stay there because it's pretty warm right now. So, But I, I quite like that shape pretty much as it is. So I think we're good here. And now uh, some folks will, will take this and quench it in, a, in water or some kind of a liquid to, to sort of cool it off rapidly. I've never really tried. I've, I'm more concerned of accidentally grabbing it the wrong way and and quenching it now that now I have to redo all that work. So uh, this is this is the shape that I want. I'm content to just let this cool. It'll take, I don't know, 20 minutes ish to cool at my you know reasonably cool garage temperature right now. Uh, but once it cools, it'll be locked in, and we'll see that in a minute. All right, it's been about 20 minutes or so. 
uh, or you know maybe about five minutes and then I blew a bunch of cold air on it with the vacuum. So uh, you know, if you're impatient like me, that's what you do. So now uh, we can undo the strap and you can see that it is it has learned its shape. It will open up a little bit over time uh, just because these always kind of go that way um, unless you're vacuum forming. If you're vacuum forming you're basically making that thing uh, like really soft almost like softer than rubber that you could sort of poke a hole through it almost um, almost but not quite it's got some elasticity to it still and that sort of uh, locks that shape in there forever and ever but this is pretty good um, I've got to the point where these don't tend to open up too much if you find that your van braces are opening up over time um, you can do what I just showed you which is to heat them up and reseal them or you can just start storing them up storing them with their straps done up a little bit tighter than where you like them to be and eventually they'll sort of learn that shape. Um, it'll take a while, but it'll be fine. But anyway, uh, you can see that this now uh, is sort of exactly as tight as I want it to be. It's easy to put on there nice and locked in. It's easy to tighten down, easy to do those up. And that is a reformed van brace. It's like a charm. There you go.